Greetings, my name is Sephiros, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Phase Plant, a wonderful synthesizer VST plugin. I highly recommend. I'm not sponsored, but I'm open to it. Phase Plant, if you're watching, hit me up. Watching, if you're watching, hit me up. Anyways, today I'm going to be just touching on some things that you can do with the Wavetable editor making your own wavetables and so let's get right into the tutorial so here we are in Ableton Live and we have phase plant and here I have a wavetable open it's the default wavetable fantastic so what if I wanna create a wavetable with something that's not in the selection of wavetables that you may have on your hard drive. You want to make something new, okay? So one really cool thing you can do is you can drag samples into the wavetable editor. So first let's pick some samples here. So I'm going to go into my uh, my file system here and let's get some different things. So I'm going to look for something that has some tonality to it. Okay, some 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 sort of organic tonality. So let's see. Let me pull up contact actually cuz I want something that I can play a note with. So I'm going to pull up contact. But you could go on like splice or freesound.org and search uh different instruments and find single notes. Um so let's start with uh, one of these wood woodwind solo instruments. I'm going to get just the, uh, the oboe, I guess. Okay, cool. So let's go into the effects and just make sure this reverb is off. All the effects are off. Okay, so I'm going to set up a, a resampling track here and just record a bit of that. So I'm going to arm both of them by holding control and then clicking the record arm button. And then I'm just going to record a note of this. Cool. Okay, so now let's get something else, something that's going to be different. So let's go in here and let's get something kind of electric let's say one of these vintage organs okay so I'm gonna open up vintage organs let's just do ga uh, yeah transistor so I'm gonna get rid of this and grab get out of this place transistor organ so <laughs> Yeah, cool. So I'm just going to record a note of that. All right, so now we can delete contact. We can open up our phase plant here, and I'm going to drag a sample into this wave table editor I got here by clicking this little pen icon. So before I do that, I'm just going to boost the gain on these. So go and just boost this up. I'm going to trim it so that there's no space. And hit control J to consolidate it. I'm going to do the same for this other one. Okay. I'm going to also boost the gain up for this oboe. Okay, so control J. And now I can drag one of these samples right into the wavetable editor. Failed to load sample unrecognized sample format. Hmm. That's a bit strange. Why? I guess I'll have to export this first as a wave. 
Maybe that's a little bit odd. Faceplant, if you're watching this, maybe you could comment on this video and tell me why this isn't working. It'd be nice if it worked. So I'm just going to export this at 30 or at 24 bit uh, export. Just call it oboe. Put it in my one shots folder. So go in here and then just put it in my tonal one shots folder. So call it oboe. contact and then this one is the organ so I'm going to call this one organ contact and now if I go into my sample folder here and I go into the tonal one shots folder and I search oboe and I can drag that sample in and now you can see we have a sample in the sample in the wavetable editor so if I arm this track we're not getting any audio yet because I think I have to cons to finish this so you have some options here root pitch c4 so it detected it you can hit detect and then it'll detect the root pitch of the note um, phase alignment you can have it uh, either on none naive correlate lock fundamental lock all let's just do none for now and crossfade that's not going to be applicable here okay so i'm going to hit done and now if we Am I on the right track here? Hmm. You can see it created us a wavetable here, but for some reason, you can see it's getting MIDI. I don't know why. This isn't working. Ah, so the first frame of this wavetable is just silence. But if I now create an LFO and I just do um, one of these, let's just do a ramp up at a bar, and then we map this to the entire wavetable. And we set this LFO to unipolar. Okay, that's that's something. Uh, I'm gonna do some fixing now. So I'm gonna select the entire waveform and just go to fixes and I'm going to normalize frame peak. What this means is that from frame to frame it's going to make the, the, the peak be the loudest thing. So you can see now it's every frame is the same volume. This is going to actually distort the original and I'm not trying to achieve a sound that's like the original because I could just use that sample. I'm just trying to get something interesting. So it's a little bit smoother. There's a click. Um, there's a click on the end there. Um, oops. Undo. So, oops, uh, cancel. So I think I could remove this frame, edit, cut. Maybe it's because it's jumping so fast here. 
what if we went go uh like what if we went back and forth Okay, that's sounding like an interesting timbre. You wouldn't just get that from any sort of synthesis method. Um, because it comes from an organic source. You can hear it sounds kind of metallic and organic. But let's apply some of these effects. Uh, let's try some of these fixes too. Maybe um, align all phases. Oh, see, now it sounds a lot more like an oboe. Basically, that makes it so that at the zero crossing from frame to frame, uh, the phase is going to be aligned, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, see, look how different our wavetable looks now. It's pretty interesting. Um, let's um, let's edit and cut the first frame. Can I cut the last frame? Edit, cut. Hmm. Okay, so now we're at the point where we have something that sounds pretty much like an oboe. Let's um. Let's just do a little bit of frame blending. Um, so that's just kind of smoothing it out a bit. Okay, so now that's a pretty good result. So now let me show you the Easter egg that I really wanted to show you, which is you can actually blend between samples here. So if I go back into our sample folder and I search organ, we can now blend between an organ and an oboe. So I'm going to drag the organ in here, and you can see it replaced the other sample, and that's because you have to come in here and drag this end point over to maybe somewhere around the middle, maybe a little bit less than the middle, and then make another point. And then for this first point, I'm going to select the mix to be zero. And now we have a blend. You can see right there that it's blending between an oboe and an organ. So I'm going to kind of locate that in the center. OK, and then hit Done. <laughs> So yeah, that just kind of gives you a little example of like some things you can do. So let's uh, let's get interesting here. Let's go for something a little less tonal now. Let's get a cork pop. Okay, that one's good. It doesn't have much silence. So let me show you a little bit more about this. So if I drag this cork pop on, and I want this to just be our transient, right? You see how if I shrink it down, it's shrinking the sample down. So up here, you can select what, what part of the sample you actually want. And I just want just the beginning of this cork pop, just to here. And then 
I'm going to make another point here. And so you can actually kind of warp the sample with these points as well, which is really interesting. So you can kind of stretch and warp the sample that way. And then for here, I'm going to just put the mix to zero. So that now we have a cork pop that's fading into an oboe that then becomes an organ. So now let's listen to that. Pretty cool. So yeah, you can see how much fun you can have with this. Um, you can really get as many samples as you want in here. Um, you know, maybe let's go for completely atonal. Let's go into, uh, let's get in, get some noise going in here. So I'm gonna go into noise. Sure, hydrant spraying. Oh yeah, frying sausage. Frying sausage, perfect. So where do we want this? Um, maybe through the whole thing. Maybe we could unify the whole thing by just mixing in a little bit of s frying sausage. And so you can choose the root pitch here so I could pitch it up. Great. So now we have basically unified the entire thing. Now I'm just going to boost it by applying a little bit of soft clipping. So let's go to distort and then saturate, which is a soft clipping mode. And let's just um, let's just give it a just six dB a drive. See, that's like, I don't know how I would synthesize that, you know, but this is a, a kind of synthesis. So, you know, you could be experimenting with dragging different vocals in here. You could have vocals blending between each other. There's so many cool things you could do with this. Um, the whole thing could use a bit of EQ, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go to Effects, and I'm going to go Tilt EQ, and I just want it to be a bit brighter. That sounds pretty good. So say I want it to sound a little bit more like a synthesizer and a little bit more hi-fi. I can select this entire waveform and just go to this blend, uh, this waveform window. And you can see it replaced it with a sine wave. We can go sine, saw, triangle, or square. Let's go for a triangle. And then let's just blend this in. So I'm going to select this first point. This last point. Maybe uh, where it, where it blends here will go even less. And you can see now our wavetable is looking pretty good. It's looking like a real wavetable there. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is the coolest thing, or one of the coolest things about Phase Plant is it allows you to use not just other waveforms that are being generated by an oscillator to be used as an FM operator, but also samplers. 
So what do I mean by that? Let's get something tonal out of here. Let's get something, um, let's get a synth. Let's get some sort of synth. Let me go into, uh, let's see. Um, something weird, modded. So this is a Richard Devine sample pack uh, of a modified ARP 2600. I think it's free online. Okay, that could be cool. Um, so I'm gonna open up a sampler and let's see what happens when we FM this cool oscillator we just made with this weird sample. So when I'm talking about FM, you're gonna think of like maybe, if you're familiar with Ableton uh, operator, the synthesizer operator, and that synth they typically call it FM synthesis, but it's not an FM synth. It's not doing frequency modulation. It's doing phase modulation, which is actually PM. And here in phase plant, if you want to get that operator sound, you want to modulate the phase here, not the shift. If you want true frequency modulation or true FM, you want to modulate the shift. But in synths like operator or serum, you see FM, they're actually talking about PM. And PM sounds very similar, but it is different because if you see when I modulate the phase here, it's going left and right. When I modulate the shift here, it's stretching the waveform longer or shorter, pitching it up and down. But if you listen to me play a note, and then I wiggle it forward and backward in time, it sounds like you're wobbling the pitch. So it's a very similar thing, but it does sound slightly different. So just to clarify that for you people. Um, so let's see what happens when we start to use a sampler to modulate the phase. Cool. It's almost like you're just mixing them, but it is it you can get all kinds of crazy results. So let's try another sample. Let's try a little zap. <laughs> So what's cool about Sampler? Well, you can actually create a kind of a granular behavior with this sampler if you turn the loop on. And then you modulate the size of this window here. So it's going to loop. And then if I map an LFO to the length, It's like starting to say, ay, 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 that's coming from the FM. You can also modulate the, um, the start position here and the crossfade. So let's modulate the crossfade a little bit 
And actually, let's modulate the um, the offset because I think that'll move our window. <laughs> The offset is actually where the sample head is going to start playing, and then the start position is for this loop. And you can change the type of loop. Let's do a uh, ping pong, so it goes back and forth. Interesting. Okay, so let's um I guess that I guess I hope that explains the few Easter eggs that I wanted to just express here. Using multiple samples in the wavetable to create an interesting wavetable with timbres that you wouldn't be able to just synthesize from scratch. And then using a sampler as an FM source to create some interesting overtones in your sound that you wouldn't get from just opening up an analog oscillator or another wavetable. Um, so yeah, I guess that I guess that does it for our tutorial today. I wanted to keep this one kind of short. I'm going to head off to bed soon. And yeah, so I'm Sephiros. Until next time, thanks for watching. Peace. Oh, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Like, subscribe. Follow me on Patreon, where I post sample packs that I make with this thing. And, yeah. Thanks. Big up. Peace.